We'll take a look at this. Many of us woke up to snow falling. Spirit Lake looks more like a winter wonderland. From Spokane to Coeur d'Alene, people reported seeing snow, and in some places, it even stuck to the ground. Good evening. Thanks for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Well, this snow event was a bit of a surprise, and that's not something we typically say when it comes to the weather, but it certainly was the case today. Meteorologist Michelle Boss joins us now to explain what happened. Michelle. Well, what it amounts to is that it was a brief event and it ended up registering a trace of snowfall at the Spokane Airport. So computer models did show a little bit of snow for today, but they also showed rain for yesterday and we didn't get any. So um, it's kind of hard to pinpoint some of those smaller events and we just kind of missed this one. So putting it behind us and looking at sunnier skies tomorrow, but definitely some chillier temperatures. Satellite and radar showing any precipitation we had today has all dissipated and we're looking at mostly clear skies in eastern Washington and north Idaho. Those winds have calmed down in the Spokane area and thank goodness because temperatures are getting cold. We're now below freezing in Deer Park, Sandpoint, right at the freezing mark in Coeur d'Alene. It slipped below freezing down toward in the Palouse, 31 in Pullman, 30 in Moscow, just a little bit milder out across the Columbia Basin, 37 degrees in Moses Lake. Here's a look at the next 12 hours. Mostly clear skies. We'll see temperatures fall down into the 20s, so you'll have to bundle up early tomorrow morning, even with the sunshine. High temperatures are only going to get up into the lower 40s, and we'll keep cooling off. Could see a few snow flurries Monday, and then look at Tuesday, starting out at 18 degrees and barely warming above freezing. Brr, it's super cold. Thanks so much, Michelle. We'll take a look at this. Some just chose to stay inside, especially that pup you saw there. The snow caught many of us off guard, including those who had to be outside this morning. And some of you captured a bit of the snow we saw around the inland northwest and shared them with us. The snow covered some yards and kept on falling. You can see a lot of snow there. Well, many of you also took to social media too. Here's some more pictures and videos from the South Hill, Cheney and North Idaho. A big thanks to everyone who shared these with us. We love seeing your weather photos. Just be sure to tag hashtag Krem2, uh, Krem weather and Krem2. All right, to the devastating wildfires now in California. Sonoma County is facing its largest evacuation orders in 25 years. The fire is threatening more than 23,000 structures. Authorities ordered at least 50,000 residents to evacuate today. Firefighters say wind-driven flames burn through the dry terrain. With more historic winds on the way, the state's largest utility company announced power shutoffs for an estimated 2.53 million people. I have been in this business for more than 40 years and I have worked all over the world and I have never seen overall conditions like the one we are, see are seeing and forecasting for this weekend. The utility is investigating whether the fire was sparked by a transmission tower that wasn't de-energized. Some wind gusts this weekend might reach up to 75 miles per hour or higher. Leaving her on the mountain until spring is not an option. That is the message of the mother of a Moses Lake hiker who's presumed dead. Search and rescue teams are still looking for Rachel Lackaduck in the North Cascades. She disappeared more than a week ago. After two days of voting, nearly 2,000 Sacred Heart nurses and workers voted to authorize a strike, but this doesn't necessarily mean they'll actually walk out, at least for now. A spokesperson with the Washington State Nurses Association says the vast majority of Sacred Heart registered nurses turned out for the vote. Now that they've approved a strike, they'll take this into their negotiations with the hospital. WSNA says that nurses are standing up to Providence, quote, in the face of new numerous illegal and unfair labor practices, including failing to bargain in good faith. We reached out to Providence and they say at this time the hospital has not reached a 10 day strike notice and we are actively bargaining in good faith with WSNA. Both sides will return to the bargaining table on Tuesday to determine if they can reach a deal. Unions we spoke to say they, um, if one isn't reached on that day, they could issue that 10 day strike. In tonight's Inland Northwest, a local group found the best way for kids to celebrate Halloween without missing out on all of the holiday treats. Now, the allergy free trunk or treat hosted its annual Halloween event for today for the kiddos with sensitivities. This is for kids who are specifically allergic to certain foods and ingredients found in many candies. Instead, at this event, they hand out prizes, glow sticks and even small toys.
We spoke with the families individually to find out what their individual family's needs are, whether it was sensory processing in the way that food feels in your mouth or certain specific allergies that their kid can't eat. It's a fun way to get everyone involved. So this was actually sponsored by the Blue Zoo, and this is very similar to what we've talked about before, the Teal Pumpkin Project, where you actually paint a teal pumpkin and you leave it at your front doorstep to let families know you're handing out allergen-free items on Halloween. For more information about Spokane allergy-friendly events, you can find them on Facebook to see what upcoming events they have going on. Well, after finding an injured bear cub while hunting, a Boise man says he wanted to take care of it until it got healthy again. That is until fish and a uh, game stepped in in Idaho. There's a clash between both sides and it was all caught on camera.